This is Local Edition. We're in Sacramento today. We are joined by Darrell Teat. He is with the Nehemiah Companies. He is president. This is an organization that works not only in California, but throughout the nation, uh, working to serve uh, un the underserved, mm -hmm. I think is the best way to say it. You have two kind of foci, if I can say, and I want to talk about both of them. Let's talk about trying to help folks become homeowners, especially low and moderate income folks. Tell us about your model. So back in 2010, when the uh, housing recession really took place, oh, yes, Nehemiah, it did. Absolutely, yes, it did. Nehemiah had the opportunity to engage in purchasing single family uh, distressed properties, uh, first in California and then across the country. Give uh, us a sense, because you were with Nehemiah back then. Mm -hmm. What were you seeing? I mean, I am aware of communities in the Inland Empire, mm -hmm. in the Central Valley, where literally every third or fourth house was in foreclosure. Absolutely. There were uh, tracked homes that were never completed. Mm -hmm. So I want to get a sense, what was it like back then? is exactly as you right. described. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to every third or fourth home, we saw uh, entire blocks decimated. Where? Do you, do you... Uh, and this was across the country. Right. Uh, you would think that not here in California that those uh, visions would come to reality, but they did, especially in the Inland Empire, right. especially in places here in Northern California as well, the Central Valley and Stockton. I remember the Los Angeles Times mm -hmm. did an extended piece on Hesperia. Mm -hmm a community in the high desert, mm -hmm. and it painted a picture of just tremendous despair with uh, communities that were selling homes before the bubble burst to 500,000, mm -hmm. dropping to 125 in a year. Absolutely. And that's where Nehemiah came in. That is. Talk to us about it, what'd you do? Well, we came in and actually competed against the institutional investors, and I'm sure you remember uh, once the housing crisis took place and there was opportunity for large institutional investors to come in and gobble up multiple homes at a time and then put them into rental portfolios, then they would securitize them and then sell them on the open market. One of the things that we did was we went in and competed with them. Mm. Went head to head, uh, we went out, raised capital, used some of our own capital as well, put it together to go out in a fund to purchase these single family properties to put homeowners back in to the properties. So talk me through it, it's still going on. So you see a home, mm -hmm. is it a home even today that's in distress that you're gonna pick up or could you pick up a home on the market? Uh, it's both. It's so both. it's homes in distress. And there's also homes that have significant deferred maintenance. I understand. So we purchase those properties. We renovate them up to FHA standards mm -hmm. and above, whatever the neighborhood calls for. Right. And then we put them into the hands for low to moderate income families, first time home buyers, and also veterans. How do you do that? Uh, are you, do you just limit your search to those in those mm -hmm. categories? We actually have relationships with several service providers that do home ownership counseling across the country. They, all, they actually bring buyers to the market for us. Uh, we also have national field partners, which are realtors and brokers that um, source particularly low to moderate income families and first time home buyers to purchase our properties as they know they're coming on the market. And I would presume that when you're going through the renovation, you're thinking of a target price. Yes. So you want to make sure that you renovate appropriately for Absolutely. the neighborhood and the target price. Absolutely. And as a result, when the sale occurs, it's an affordable rate. Yes. But you presumably make a profit. I'm not saying that in a negative way because yeah. then you can plow those profits yes. into the next home. Yep, we actually we call it programmatic revenue. Nice, well stated. It, it's called the Nehemiah uh, Neighborhood Restoration Program, nice. which purchases these properties. And then once the proceeds come back in, they're reinvested back into purchasing more properties and renovating more properties. Because right. you're a nonprofit, that's so that's correct. your goal. Uh, um, now you price the properties at market level for mm -hmm. a variety of reasons, yes. including the neighborhood retention, I guess you could say. Absolutely. One of the things we want to do, in addition to bringing in new um, low to moderate income families, for new home, first time right. home buyers, we want to make sure we uplift right. the overall uh, neighborhood. Oftentimes what you'll see is someone go in and undercut the market, therefore depress the overall value of the homes. And, and you know much better than I that we're facing, uh, facing a housing crisis. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the homeless crisis, but there aren't enough homes in California for the demand. And on top of that, 
we're not building enough homes, and on top of that, they're too expensive. That's correct. And so it's a win-win for all of California. Another area in which you work, which I think is quite unique, I, I'm not familiar with many organizations that do this, is you're working directly with nonprofits. Explain mm -hmm. that element of your model. Right. So under the Nehemiah Company's umbrella, as a social enterprise, we operate the Nehemiah Community Reinvestment Fund, sure. which is a 5013 Treasury Certified Community Development Financial Institution. No so basically, we act as a bank for those that aren't able to get traditional financing from the, the major banks out there. So for example, let's say there's an organization that is looking to revitalize maybe a blighted area. Mm -hmm. Or let's say they're looking to build uh, a home for the homeless that need wraparound services. Yeah. Uh, they need to renovate an existing facility. Is that where you come in? That's exactly where we come in. Okay. We're kind of the, the scene as the bank that would go out a little bit more on the risk right. curve to help advance communities. Whereas oftentimes some of the organizations that come in have a great mission, uh, they have a great operation model, but unfortunately maybe their financial uh, books aren't in order. Right. Or they don't have enough cash flow right now in order to sustain the note on a, a mortgage of, you know, say $1.2 million. Sure. We would actually be the conduit that works with the institutional investors to bring in capital specifically for underserved community investment. But just so I understand, I assume that you're borrowing from traditional institutions. You have your own fund. Yes and then you act as the bank. That's correct. And I would also presume that in that role, you're not just a bank, you're a friend. Absolutely. And so you're helping these folks to, along with their mission. And if they get into financial distress, you're there to act as a supporter, not as a forecloser. Absolutely. If you know what I'm saying. That's exactly right. And so talk to us about some of your favorite success stories. You know, here locally yeah, in, we're in Sacramento, today. In, in, in Sacramento yeah. and we have uh, a project called the 40 Acres Project in Oak Park, uh -huh. uh, which has a theater, a, uh, a coffee shop, barber shop, uh, as well as a bookstore. This is an underserved part of Sacramento. We made this loan several years ago, which actually was a catalyst for more development in the area. And you said it. When you revitalize an area, there are catalytic consequences to that revitalization. Absolutely. All of a sudden, you have a great theater, and then all of a sudden, a coffee shop opens, and then a grocery store opens Absolutely. to avoid the food island. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it, it just, but I got to ask you, you know better than I, yeah. we have seen an elimination of redevelopment mm -hmm. in the state of California. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will come back, who knows, mm -hmm. but how has that affected your model? You know what? It's actually increased demand uh, I get it. for yeah, our model. I get it. Yeah. Um, especially since the financial institutions have the Community Reinvestment Act obligations to invest, uh, they see it as a win-win mm -hmm. uh, in order to make sure that we replenish those funds that were lost. Is there a way for us to get involved with Nehemiah? Absolutely. Yeah, um, how? Uh, the, first, go to our website okay. to really understand what we do, and that's www.ncrffund.org. Got it. Uh, that's number one. Number two, feel free to call us uh, at 916-231-1999 uh -huh. okay. at any given moment. Someone will be there to give you the overview of everything that we do and how we can actually support initiatives in the community and how they can support us. Yeah, I would presume that you're looking for nonprofits mm -hmm. to help support. Absolutely. I mean, as you know, there's going to be a measure on the ballot in the fall, No Place Like Home, mm -hmm. which is looking to provide uh, funding for housing for the permanently, uh, permanent housing for the mentally ill. Mm -hmm. There may be nonprofits that will be able to access some of those funds but need bridge support. Absolutely. Uh, so first off, what we need, we need investors. So oh. we need investors, we need financial institutions, we need uh, family foundations and corporate foundations right. that understand that we have the expertise to underwrite right. these relationships as well as provide the capital to really be catalytic in the community. You're doing good work. Thank you very much. His name is Darrell Tate. He is the president of the Nehemiah Companies. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are in Sacramento on Local Edition.